All right, you guys, so we're gonna be cooking today. I'm gonna be showing you guys how I make my new cheese sauce with um, potatoes and carrots, vegan cheese sauce, of course. <laughs> so I'm going to be eating this dish that we're about to make over some quinoa. So to save time, I already cooked my quinoa. And let me show you guys, for those of y'all who don't know what quinoa is, it's really good if you season it, okay? You have to season the quinoa. If you don't season it, it's not really gonna take, taste like much. But you want it to be like nice and fluffy. So it's a grain, and quinoa is a healthier option for you because it has protein in it and fiber. So, you know, just, just some food for thought. Of course, eat what you want. Use whatever grain you want, but Quinoa is going to be a healthier bet, and I know a lot of times people wonder, since I'm vegan, where do I get my protein from? Quinoa. <laughs> um, so that's an option for you there, too. Okay, so got lots of moving parts here. Let's see what I want to start with. Let's go ahead, and we're going to skin our potatoes. So I'm going to use two russet potatoes. And I'll probably do three carrots. Yeah, I haven't cleaned these yet, so let me do this now. <laughs> so while I'm getting all this together, we're gonna have a little chit chat. And right, first and foremost, try your best to clean your veggies as, as best as possible. I mean, we're boiling it. I don't, listen, judge me if you want. I clean my stuff. I definitely clean my vegetables, okay? I clean my fruit but I don't obsess over it. <laughs> I'm just not the person that's just going to like obsess over the dirt and stuff that may be on this fruit <laughs> or these vegetables. <laughs> like I've seen people like put baking soda in water and let their fruits and stuff soak in it like that. Yeah, I don't. I'm not doing all that. Plus, we're going to be boiling this. So I feel like when you boil stuff, you sterilize it, right? <laughs> did I make that up? I feel like you do. Again, this is a judgment-free YouTube channel, okay? So listen, feel free to put your two cents in, but I feel like you do. All right, so the point of boiling our... Mm, making a lot of noise over there. The point of boiling our carrots and the potato is so that it'll be soft. So when we blend this up, like we would with the cashews, y'all have seen me make the vegan cheese with the cashews. But the point is to make these vegetables soft so it'll just be easier for the blender to handle them, okay? So I'm gonna kinda cut these carrots a little bit smaller. I notice like when you cut them, cause carrots take a long time to cook down but if you cut them into smaller pieces, I find that it speeds up the process a little bit. All right, so I just cut them into chunks here and slice them in half so that we can get it going faster. So dump that in there. And let's skin these potatoes. Normally, you guys, when I eat potatoes, I use the skin, like I eat the skin. But I don't know how the skin would taste in cheese sauce. So that's the only reason why I'm skinning. But if I was making like french fries or something like that, I'm going to be honest, I would use the skin. All right. Mm. This potato looks like it's been through some things. All right. It's okay though because we're skinning. All right. So let's talk about it. I'm on my I Am app. If you guys have not downloaded that app yet, you don't know what you're missing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you again. Download the app. I Am. It speaks positive affirmations to you. You can set it for however often you want it to, you know, just remind you of how great you are, of how dope you are, of how badass you are, okay? All right, positive affirmations. All right, let's get to skinning. So this one says, I enjoy the journey of life. Yes, 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 yes. You guys, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Okay. And 
me being as open as I am and really like being vulnerable for you guys is growth for me because there was a point where I just, I don't know why, but I just really felt like I had to just have it all together. I really did. I don't, I don't know where this came from, but that's just how I felt. And I never would open up and talk to people about stuff that I had going on, stuff that I was dealing with. Even when I had friends at that time, like I just, I just never really could, I don't know. I just, it is what it is, but yeah, that used to be me. Okay. And one thing that I can say is being on my mental health journey and I'm still on the journey. I don't think any journey ever ends. I feel like there's always room for improvement. Like no matter how emotionally stable you get, I'm doing a horrible job of scanning this by the way, but no matter how emotionally stable you get, there's just always room for growth. There's always room to learn something. But I will say, just this mental health journey, I'm on multiple journeys, but this mental health journey that I've been on, you guys, has really just been a complete game changer for me. Like, there's nothing in this world I feel like I cannot do. And that's saying a lot because I used to put limitations on myself all the time. But I am such a confident woman now. Of course, there's room for improvement. Like, I don't ever want y'all to think that I'm just saying like I don't need to improve like no <laughs> no but like I have really gotten so confident in myself everything that I tell myself I'm gonna do I do it like I always fucking do it it might not move as quickly as I originally anticipated but baby best believe that whatever I say I'm gonna do I do I do it. I always fucking do it. I always deliver to myself. And that takes a lot of mental health because I, you know, I read y'all's comments and I love the fact that you guys comment and, you know, tell me some of the things that y'all have been going through or went through, whatever. And I see so many women, again, I'm assuming these are women because, you know, their account pictures, profile pictures, whatever. But you guys, it'll be a lot of women and I used to suffer with this too, who are not confident in themselves. Like, who say, like they'll literally leave comments and say like, I wish I had as much confidence as you. And it's so sad to hear that. I didn't know, see that's what I'm saying. There was a point where I thought everything I was going through, I was the only one going through it. Like I know that sounds bizarre, but I just never thought people experienced things that I experienced. And you know, I, I didn't know that so many women, including myself at one point, was insecure with themselves. Like I, I thought everyone else had it all together. <laughs> right? I thought I was the only one suffering with that. And the biggest game changer that I can tell you when it comes to building your confidence, not just like physically confident, like, oh yeah, I know I'm pretty. Not just that, but like believing that you can achieve anything. The biggest thing that I can tell you that really helped me was committing to the promises that I make for myself. Like I say this over and over and over again because it is so true. It is such a game changer. Look at it like this. Look at it like this. Let's, let's give an example. I love examples. Let's say you're dealing with a man. <laughs> I, I feel like I feel like when we when we give examples, like I feel like women relate better when we talking about a relationship. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it. And if it's men watching, you can revert it to if it's a woman. Okay, but let's just use this as an example, prime example. Let's say you're dealing with a partner, situationship, husband, boyfriend, whatever you want to call it, girlfriend, whatever. And let's say you don't have a car at the moment. Your car broke down. Whatever and you need them to take you to work and pick you up, okay? So they agree that they're gonna do it. And every, t every day, <laughs> especially if this is your car, but we, let's just say it's their car, but we go, there have been times where this has happened to me with my own car, but okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> let's, say, let's say they're supposed to pick you up with their car and every day they're fucking late picking you up every single day, even though they already committed and told you that they were going to be your ride. They already agreed to this, but every single day you're expecting them to be on time and they're not on time. They're always late. 
at some point, <laughs> at some point, you are going to stop believing that they're going to be on time. They can come back, they can come pick you up 30 minutes later and just be begging for you to forgive them. Like they're so sorry it was traffic or they got tied up doing this and the third, whatever. They can have an excuse for days. But at some point, if they continuously not pick you up on time from work, you are going to stop believing that they're going to be on time to pick you up from work, right? Because they're showing you over and over and over again, they are incapable. <laughs> they are not capable of picking you up on time. No matter how many times they tell you they're going to do it, right? Okay. So that's the example. Use that same example and apply it to you and all of the promises that you make yourself that you don't do. Okay. I'm, Hey, Hey, I'm just saying, I'm just saying you are going to subconsciously lose faith in your ability to do what you told yourself you were going to do. Am I right or am I, Hey, Hey, <laughs> am I right or am I wrong here? I'm fucking right because you know, it's true. You know, it's true. Just like I know it's true. Okay. This is a judgment free zone, but I'm just telling you, sometimes we have to reflect on our own selves, right? You, you understood what I was saying when I'm talking about, oh boy, or oh girl picking you up from work on time. So let's use it with our own self and our own life. You know, like if you are constantly telling yourself, that you're going to start this weight loss kit. If you're going, if you're going to go to the gym, you're going to start eating right. You're going to stop going from zero to 100. You're going to, you know, control your attitude problem. If you got an attitude problem, if you constantly are telling yourself, you're going to start going to bed on time, but yet every time it's time to do that thing that you promise yourself you're going to do, you don't do it you are going to stop believing in your ability to do it because you have proven to yourself that you're not going to do it. Like that's just, it is what it is. So I say all this to say that in order to really build your confidence with yourself, your self-confidence, you have got to start committing to the promises that you made to yourself and it doesn't matter how hard it gets. If you said you were going to do it, then damn it, you need to do it and you need to fucking do it and you need to do it. Like you need to do it. Like no excuses. We're not doing excuses. It is what it is. Now, of course I like to clean and cook. I can't just let dishes just pile up and not clean while we cook. I can't do it. I have OCD. <laughs> but anyways, so I say all this to say, you guys, start committing to the promises that you make yourself. Okay. If you say that you're going to lose 20 pounds, then lose 20 pounds. Now I'm not sitting here saying lose that 20 pounds in a week. No, but you need to be committing to the process that you have to go through to lose those 20 pounds. So eating right, exercising, drinking water instead of soda, right? Being in a caloric deficit, you have to start that process. And over time, as you, as you reach the goals that you promised yourself you wanted to achieve, your self-esteem is going to improve dramatically. It really is. Like, trust me, I know because I've been doing it. I don't promise myself something unless one, I've done research on it because I don't want to break my own promises to myself because it sucks. It really sucks. Like even just like in my day to day, if I have a list of things that I want to get done and then I don't get it all done, maybe things took a little bit longer than I anticipated. Maybe something wasn't working the way it should have been working, like whatever. When I go to bed at night, I'm not going to say I'm like losing sleep over it, but it does suck because I'm like, man, I'm supposed to do this, this, and this, and then get done. You know, it just, it doesn't feel good to not do what you said you were going to do for yourself or for what you're working on for you, right? So start working on that. Okay, so we got the potatoes and the carrots 
letting the water boil. And again, we're just gonna let it boil until it gets soft. So next what we can do is we can start cooking our vegetables. Cause I'm just gonna saute a whole bunch of veggies and I'm gonna put the veggies over the quinoa and then put the cheese sauce over the veggies and that's gonna be the meal. Why can I not get this cord out of this damn, hold on. Mm. Okay, I don't know why that was so hard. So for my veggies, another source of protein that as vegans <laughs> eat, right? Cause I know so many people are like, where do you get your protein from? I'm telling you, I'm showing you, I got you. You go, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you what I do. All right, so <laughs> I have garbanzo beans, also known as chickpeas. You guys, listen, before I was vegan, I did not know that garbanzo beans and chickpeas were the same thing. <laughs> so the can says garbanzo beans, I call them chickpeas, tomato, tomato, but it's the same thing. Chickpeas, any bean is a great source of protein. Any beans, so black beans, pinto beans, navy beans, black eyed peas, is that considered a bean? I know my grandma used to make those all the time for New Year's. I think those are a bean, I don't know. But beans, lentils, soy milk, tempeh, tofu. I don't like tofu, but a lot of vegans do. I like tempeh. Tofu and tempeh is a soy product. Okay. So all I'm going to do is just rinse these. Some people, listen, I'm a lazy cook, <laughs> okay? I'm not trying to do the most. <laughs> I just want to do just enough to make it taste good and make it edible, okay? So <laughs> some people, and I'll show you in case you didn't, you know, if you haven't seen, there are shells on these chickpeas. Okay, let me bring one closer to you guys. So there's like a thin shell on the top of them and people will sit there and pull it off. You know, I pinch a few off. Y'all see that? I'll pinch a few off or whatever, but I'm not about to sit there and do it to all of them. Okay, but if you, hey, if you want to, you do you. I don't, I don't really taste them. Oh shit. I don't really taste them, so they don't bother me. I dropped one. They don't bother me, but if you don't like it, then you know, that's fine, do you. But just showing you how it's done. And then I do rinse them, so I just put them in a strainer here, like a noodle strainer, and I just kinda like rinse them all. And that's pretty much it. They're pretty, at this point though, they're ready to cook. So let's go ahead. I love to cook in my skillet. I love my skillet, you guys. If you don't have a skillet, honey, get you a skillet. I got this skillet on Amazon like two years ago for like 50 bucks. <laughs> now it is on its last leg, I'm not gonna lie. I've been so I need to order another one because the ceramic that's on it, hold on y'all, sometimes this, okay. The ceramic that's on it to keep it like non-stick is not non-sticky anymore. <laughs> so it does require me to use a little bit more oil so that stuff doesn't stick. So that's not the best. I'm gonna get a new one. But anyway, so we're gonna let that preheat. Make sure I have a cut on. All right, let's start cutting up some stuff. I use the same vegetables for pretty much any dish that I make. So my standards are bell peppers, mushrooms, onions, peas, chickpeas. If I'm feeling extra fancy, I'll get some squash and some zucchini, you know, but as long as I have mushrooms and onions and bell peppers, <laughs> like, that's really, that's really, really all I need to make some work. All right, so let's go through our next affirmation. Mm, I love this. I am happy that I know how to express my feelings, period. You guys, sometimes on your journey, you're gonna run into people who are gonna try to invalidate your feelings. Especially like if you're in like a toxic relationship or toxic friendship, people will try it. People may try to tell you that you're being too sensitive or 
you're crazy or you're overreacting or whatever, whatever they can come up with to, you know, not take accountability for how they made you feel. Listen, let me tell you something. Your feelings are valid, all right? And you have to express how you feel. You can't expect people to read your mind either. And I used to struggle with that. Some things I felt like were common sense. So what do I mean? Let's say I'm talking, let's say I'm dealing with like a friend or something. And, you know, I had to learn on my mental health journey that what one person considers standards in a friendship, another may not. So it's also about learning how to communicate too. So on one end, you have people who, you know, they know what they're doing, they know how they're making you feel, but they're gonna try to gaslight you, right? But then on the other end, you also have to learn how to communicate and express what it is that you're expecting, right? So I had to learn that, because like I said, I, I felt like some things are common sense, but what one person may consider common sense is not something that someone else may consider common sense. And then you also have to learn too, not, common sense is not as common as you think. So I had to work on my communication skills when it came to people, because I also used to be the person that would just hold it in. Because I, I was such a people pleaser at one point. Yes, yes, like, yes, I was. Like Sometimes when I reflect back, I'd be shaking my head, because I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know what the hell was going through my mind back in the day. Back in the day, as in like four years ago. But still, like, sometimes it just don't make no sense. But it is what it is. It's about growth and learning and doing better. But yes, you have to learn how to express yourself and communicate what you need. And if you're in a real friendship, like if you're dealing with someone who really cares about you, who really, you know, wants to be in your life, then they can sit there and listen and take accountability and, you know, express themselves to you and explain to you why they did what they did or why they didn't think that what they were doing was upsetting you, right? That's a healthy friendship. That's a healthy dynamic. I feel like that's how that should go. But on the other end of that, you have some people who don't feel like they do anything wrong who will try to make you feel like it's all you and that you're the one that needs to change and not them. So, you know, you, you have to decide what kind of person you're dealing with. And sometimes, you know, it's not that you're no longer interested in not being their friend, but you're just not interested in putting in as much time, energy, and effort as you once were, right? You also have to meet people where they are and understand that, again, what you may consider non-negotiables for a friendship or relationship, other people may not. And then you have to decide, I'm just pulling the peel, the shells off of these. You have to decide, is it something you're willing to tolerate or not? Now, I'm gonna give you a hint. When you're trying to make that decision, I always talk about how does that interaction with that person make you feel? And that's your answer. If, you know, if whenever you address something with someone, it makes you feel nervous, anxious, dreadful, stressed, then that's, that's probably not someone that's meant to be in your life. But again, that's only something you can determine. Like nobody can tell you cut them off, you know, at some point, and it's different for everybody, at some point you'll, you'll get tired of the bullshit, right, at some point you're going to wake the fuck up and be like, nah, fuck this person, <laughs> like, I'm not dealing with this shit no more, but that timeline is different for different people, right, what, you know, some people recognize things right off gate, and then some people are, you know, they just see the best in everyone, I, I'm someone I used to see the best in everybody, I wouldn't necessarily go off of what they're showing me. I would go off of what I believe they could be. Their potential. Their potential. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, okay? <laughs> they ain't doing no more potential. <laughs> we doing what you what you showing me. That's what, that's what we going off of. But anyway, so you just have to, you know, decide for yourself and, you know, be a be a good communicator because I used to struggle with this too. I used to not say 
what was bothering me because I felt like it should be understood. But you can't do that. That's not healthy either. That's pretty toxic. And you're sitting there festering in your own feelings and you're mad and no one knows why you're mad, but you feel like they should know. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that because I used to do that. Do not do that. That is unhealthy as fuck. Okay. <laughs> now, if you have to keep telling them, okay, now at this point, they just don't give a fuck. But at least tell them, express yourself, and, you know, see how they react to it. If the reaction is positive and they take accountability, they're listening, they're not, you know, undermining you, not making you feel like you have a point or, you know, that they care, and then no, uh, cut them, cut them off. All right, that's all the shells I'm gonna cut off of this or pull off. Excuse me. Okay. So I feel like there was one more thing I was gonna say to that, but I can't remember. If it comes back to me, I'll say it. All right. So the potatoes and carrots are boiling. Good, good, good. All right. So I already cut up an onion the other day, so I'm just gonna throw that in there. I'm also gonna put some vegetable broth in this skillet to just kind of help everything cook a little better. All right, let's cut up these bell peppers. Put these chickpeas in here. I also have mushrooms. These are white mushrooms. I don't really cut them up. I just kind of throw them in like so. All right, and I'm going to put the peas in a little bit later. Let's cut up these peppers real quick. I feel like there was something else I was going to say to that, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, go off of how they make you feel. Like, if you are afraid to express yourself to this person because you know it's not going to be a positive discussion, like, they might start yelling they might start name calling, they might start deflecting, then that lets you know right there that's probably just not someone you should be dealing with. All right, next affirmation. Ooh, yes, honey. I commit to living a joyful and happy life. Yes, 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 because I, listen, I have been on the other side. I used to be a very miserable soul. Mm, mm, mm. I didn't even like myself. That's how you know. I didn't like myself. That's why I acted like that, because I did not like myself. I was not happy internally. It just wasn't good. It wasn't fun. I was drinking all the time. I felt trapped. It just, it sucked, you guys. It sucked. So when you come from that, like being that way, being cynical, being insecure, Maybe you're abusing substances. Like I used to drink every single day, every single day. When you get to the other side of that and you do become a happy person that's full of light and positive energy and you start to believe in yourself, I'm telling you, you are going to be committed to keeping that feeling. Because you've already experienced what it feels like to not be that. And you remember how dark it is. And you don't want to ever go back there. Right? So some of the things that I do to keep myself in this positive state. and Because it, it, takes, it takes work, you guys. It takes work. It takes daily work. Daily check-ins with yourself. Like you know, checking in with yourself, asking yourself, how am I feeling right now? I ask myself this all the time, not just first thing in the morning, all the time. I consider it like a self-reflection period. So, you know, I could randomly be working on editing content, right? And I might take a pause, maybe something ex is exporting. And I'll just be like, Jazz, how do you feel right now? And I'll say, you know, I feel good or I feel anxious, you know, and then if if it's not a positive feeling, then I'll ask myself, like, okay, what is causing you to feel this way? And it could be a number of things. It could be because, you know, things are taking longer than I thought it would. 
It could be because I'm hungry, right? It could be because I'm sleepy. It could be because I just don't feel like I have enough time. Like it could be anything, right? So, but I'm, the point is I'm checking in and trying to figure out the solution to getting out of feeling however I'm feeling if it's not a good feeling, right? So don't feel like you can't talk to yourself. You should check in with yourself. Okay, let me get the peas. Check in with yourself though. And for me, I feel like a lot of that came with, because I am my own best friend, like, you know, if you, like I, I tell you guys this all the time, if you have real genuine connections with people, consider yourself blessed because I, I didn't realize this either. A lot of people don't, like a lot of people don't. And that doesn't mean that they're a bad person. That means they haven't found their tribe. Okay. Some people, I think sometimes people think, oh, if you don't have friends, that, that means you're the problem. No, that not, that's not necessarily true. It, it could be true. Like I understand why people would say that, but that's not always the case. And I hate that people think that. And that would be another reason why I'd be so afraid to admit, like, I don't have any friends. Because <laughs> it's like, I don't want you to think I'm the problem, you know. <laughs> Maybe in someone else's eyes I am, but I know I'm not. I just haven't found my community of women who share the same values as me. That's, I think that's the most honest answer. You know, I believe that people should pour into each other. A lot of the relationships that I used to be in, friendships, I was always the giver and never on the receiving end. And that doesn't necessarily just mean financially. I think sometimes people think in order to be a giver, you have to be giving money. And that is true. Like there have been plenty of times I have given people gifts given people money and it's never been returned not that I was looking for it to be returned but at the same time if someone is constantly see that's the other thing too I see a lot on socials like sometimes if you're constantly doing for someone and they're not doing for you people will twist it and be like well you should always be giving out of the kindness of your heart yes that is true <laughs> but at the same time you should also be on the receiving end of that with something. It might not necessarily be monetary, right? Everyone's pockets are not the same, but are they giving you support? Are they giving you love? Are they giving you a shoulder to cry on? You know, if the answer is no to none of that, but you're always giving them stuff, it's time to reevaluate. So I say all that to say being, I would rather, let me season this. I'm going to be using my Creole seasoning. I would rather be by myself than continue to be in friendships where it's one-sided because I have been in one-sided friendships before and it's not a fun feeling. It's not fun. And if you've experienced that, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. It is not a fun feeling to be in a one-sided friendship. It's not fun. You feel drained. You feel unheard. You feel unworthy like it's just it's just a whole bunch of positive or negative emotions associated with that and I don't like how that makes me feel so if I feel like I'm doing more for somebody not just financially I'm gonna say that one more time because I know people like to flip stuff not just financially but energy too like let's say you know one of your friends I don't know maybe they got a degree and so you know they're so excited about it and you're excited for them. Like, you are genuinely excited for them. You're like, yes, I knew you could do it, girl. Like, that's my girl. That's my girl. You know, you ready to celebrate with them. Like, let's go. I don't drink, but you might be. Let's go get some drinks. Let's go to happy hour, whatever, right? You're just ready to celebrate with them. You're ready to just pour into them, congratulate them for all of the hard work that they put in. Maybe they just got a job promotion. Like, whatever it is. But when it's your turn, when you do something great and you're telling your friends and it's crickets or it's, it's not the same level of hypeness, I feel like people who are close to you are supposed to hype you the fuck up. Like, if, even if, especially if you're like doubting yourself, they're supposed to be the ones, first of all, you should be the one to pick your own self up. Okay. I'm not sitting here saying you gotta be codependent on somebody else, 
But what I'm saying is, if you are their hype man or hype woman, then they should also be that for you. And when they're not, that is taking energy away. Like, you can't keep giving your energy to people who aren't giving it back. That's not fun. I don't care how people want to flip it and spin it. That's not fun. Like, it's not fun. So, let me get my smoked paprika to put in this too. I say all that to say that, you know, if you're in a one-sided friendship or relationship, maybe evaluate that. Because, you know, being in those type of relationships aren't fun and it's not going to make you feel good about yourself, you know. And it's all about preserving our energy and making ourselves feel good and feel happy every day. And you deserve to be around people who are going to pour into you like you pour into them. Like, you deserve that. And if you're, ooh, and if your tribe, if your community of girls, whatever, is not providing you with that space, then you don't need to be friends with them. Be by yourself until the universe brings people to you who are going to celebrate you, who are going to reciprocate your level of energy and support and love. There's nothing wrong with being by yourself until, you know, until you meet those people. All right. Next affirmation. Oh, yes. Amen to this. I deserve to be paid for my skills, time, and knowledge. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And this is why I don't talk too much about it because I recognize not everybody wants to run a business and that's totally fine. You know, that doesn't mean you're not smart. <laughs> that doesn't mean that, you know, it, it doesn't mean any of that. Like not everyone has to run a business. It's, it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> but if you want to, like if you, if you desire to be a CEO, you deserve that. And I'm not sitting here saying that it's not going to take time. It takes a lot of time to run a business. It act I actually work way harder running my own thing than when I was working for the man, right, as people put it. But I would still rather this than, you know, working a nine to five. And again, I'm not knocking anyone who works a nine to five. I, I wouldn't do that. I'm just saying that if there's something that you want to do, do it. Like, do it. You would be surprised. I was surprised. You would be surprised at how many people need someone like you. Like, maybe you're really good at accounting. Open up your own accounting firm. Maybe you're really good at filing taxes or whatever that comes with, you know? Become a CPA, like whatever that is, like do it. Maybe you're really, maybe you have knowledge in something. Maybe you're a really good cook. Make your, put your recipes in the daggone cookbook and sell it. Like people need you. People need you, you guys. You may not think so, but I'm telling you, that's why I said I was surprised myself. People need you. Like everyone has a skill, at least one skill. Like I don't believe there's not one person on this earth who does not have a skill. And believe it or not, that one skill that you may have, even though I think people have many skills, but we're just going to, I'm not going to overwhelm you. <laughs> that one skill that you have that you actually like, because sometimes we have skills, but we don't really like to do those skills. But you also have skills that you really do like to do, okay? So for the skills that you have that you really like to do, if you don't monetize that and stop being lazy, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers, but if you don't figure out how to monetize it, because I'm telling you, people need you. People need you, okay? So those skills that you're sitting on, them skills that you ain't trying to bring to the forefront, you better stop playing and stop being stingy with your skills and figure out a way to monetize it so you can start making some money for them skills that God blessed you with, okay? Period. <laughs> All right. Let me check on these uh, potatoes and carrots to see if they're soft. Yes. Ah, oh, they're soft. Period. Okay. All right. So 
the veggies are just about done too. So what we're gonna do, I still have my strainer here. We're just going to dump them in the strainer. See, it didn't take that long to boil. All right, set that to the side. All right, so I'm going to be using my Vitamix here. I t every time I pull this out, I tell you guys the same, ooh, same thing. All right, let me explain this to you. <laughs> this Vitamix is considered one of the higher powered blenders. If you're new to blending cheese sauce or blending stuff, eating healthy, whatever, do not feel like you have to go out and spend 300 bucks or more on a blender, okay? The cheaper ones work too. Don't go spending all your money. The cheaper ones work too, all right? They may take a little bit longer to blend, but it will eventually blend. That's all I'm gonna say about it, okay? So let me, let me wipe this counter down real quick. What? I don't think, I didn't even get this blender until I think I was four months into being vegan and then I invested in the blender. So just don't feel like you gotta go rush and get all these fancy appliances to eat right. Cause you don't, you can, you know, gradually increase it or gradually, you know, get better stuff over time or don't like, it's fine. All right. The veggies are just about done as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug this blender up. I'll show you guys how we make this cheese sauce. Okay, so let's put the veggies in. So this is gonna make a lot, just so you guys know. All right, we're gonna do one cup of plant-based milk. My preference is soy milk. Soy milk has protein in it. So it's another way I get protein, okay? Well, actually, I might do a cup and a half. Well, I have a cup and a half scoop. All right, let's do a cup and a half, sorry. All right. We're gonna do a little bit of vegetable broth, not too much, but a little, a little som som. And then last but not least, our nutritional yeast. So the nutritional yeast, you guys, is what's going to give it the cheesy, air quotes on cheesy, the cheesy flavor. So I have two flavors here. I have nacho spice. Nacho spice is actually my favorite one. This is a little salty, so when I use this one, I don't season the sauce. But they also have the regular one, which is just a nutritional yeast. So it's really your own preference on which one you wanna use. I got this brand, these brands from Whole Foods. Okay, so we're gonna do a half a cup, I'm gonna use the nacho flavored one. And we're gonna put that in there, okay? And put the lid on, and let's start this blending. got the expensive one, the shit could be getting stuck. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, don't feel like you guys spent all your money on something high powered. I'm gonna stick the emulsifier in to kind of help it do its thing a little better.
doesn't take as long to blend as the nuts would. But that's because the, the potato and the carrots are already soft because we boiled them. So that makes sense. And our veggies are done here too. So I'm going to cut this skillet off. Ooh. And then I'm going to show you guys what the cheese sauce looks like. Mm -hmm. All right. So, first let me taste it. Make sure it's to my liking. Let's see what we got here. It's good. Okay. No, I'm not going to tell you a lie. In my opinion, it don't taste like no damn cheese. <laughs> I am not one of those vegans that's going to sit there and tell you it tastes like something that it don't taste like. When it comes to cheese flavored, the cashew one, in my opinion, where I soak the cashews and then blend the cashews with the nutritional yeast, the soy milk, and the vegetable broth, that tastes more cheesy to me. This is a really good sauce, but it's not a cheese sauce, in my opinion, okay? I just want to throw that out there make it be known. This is a healthier version because it's not high in fat. Nuts are high in fat and they're high in calories. Okay. It's good fat, right? It's unsaturated fat, but they're still high in fat, high in calories. Whereas this, it was literally just potatoes and carrots. So damn near no calories in the serving. Carrots have what, like 10 calories per carrot and a rusted potato is about a hundred calories per potato. So we did two potatoes, but look at all this cheese sauce. Exactly. So it's not even really worth counting. I can have as much of this as I want. All right. So let me go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. So see how it's nice and smooth. It's orange because of the carrots, but it's really good, but it doesn't taste like cheese to me. I don't know what it tastes like to be honest with you, but yeah, look at how this, this is going to last me a while. All right. So let's go ahead and Plate our food and taste it, shall we? Get me a bowl. So I'll do about a half a cup of quinoa. I'm going to just do a scoop because I'm not really that hungry right now. I'll save this for dinner. But I'm going to taste it on camera for you guys. So about, mm, it's more like one fourth cup of quinoa. Let's put some of our veggies on here. Peas. And where's my spoon? Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh no. Okay. Put some of this sauce on here. Uh, again, I love the fact that it is so low in calories and no fat that I can have as much sauce as I want and not feel bad about it. That's why I decided to make it this way as opposed to the nut way, the cashew way. I would have to monitor how much cheese sauce I'm using. All right. So I'm making the biggest mess. Okay, so this is what we got. So I'm gonna just mix all this up. I'm gonna eat more later. I'm just not that hungry right now. Okay. So can y'all see that? It's very like, this is such a mess. It kind of looks like baby food. <laughs> like, it's giving, it's giving Gerber, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, y'all can see? Okay, hold on, let me. Let me re rinse off my hands because I don't want to get my clothes dirty. It's definitely giving Gerber. But I promise you it tastes really good. Okay. Let's have a bite, shall we? All right. Here we go. Mmm. Yep. That is delicious. Mmm. That is delicious, you guys. There you have it. Very healthy, low calorie, high in fiber because of the quinoa and the veggies, high in protein. Very delicious. And by the way, you guys, nutritional yeast has protein in it as well. I don't know how much. Let's see. Um, a half a teaspoon is... Maybe I made that up. It says zero protein. I could have sworn nutritionally you had protein in it. Okay. Well, I lied. But still high, in, still high in protein because we had the 
chickpeas and the quinoa in here. So really, really, really good. I'm going to finish this. Thank y'all so much for watching and I will see you guys later.